My name is Mariko Figan. Um, I'm a Ghanaian. I was born in Keta, a little town in Keta, um, between the sea and the lagoon. So I grew up as a fisherman. Uh, my grandpa was a fisherman. Um, and then I went to Kita Secondary School. I graduated from Kita Secondary School and started um, my accounting uh, studies. So I chartered as a chartered accountant a couple of years back uh, and worked here for a bit as a consultant, as an auditor, and as an accountant, and then um, left for the UK where I've been working as an independent uh, consultant for international development for a couple of years now. Um, I left that job three years back and I'm back in Ghana now. I've always been in Ghana. Um, I'm just back for a bigger reason, which is to, um, as you would know, uh, running as an independent candidate for presidency in 2020, at least aspiring at this stage until um, the processes are all finalized. As an independent candidate, that independent side of the equation, because I I did not think that the NDC or the NPP had anything more to offer Ghanaians. Uh, that's one. Uh, secondly, as an independent, because I felt we needed somebody who was not already tied into the system that needed changing because then they have no political will to change it. Uh, and I'm quite independent in that regard. So it made sense to do this as an independent person rather than go join a group of people who are already part of the system that we're all trying to uh, see a difference in. So, uh, but in terms of the motivation, look, I'm tired of our youth not being supported and not being able to create opportunities for themselves like other youth in other countries do. I'm tired of the aged people who uh, live work after having told their uh, life blood and sweat and tears and, and not being treated with any decency. I'm, I'm tired of the ordinary business person who feels that is always uh, vindicted against simply because they are aligned to a political party or the other. And I'm tired of uh, the people in the diaspora who can come back to their country because they feel that just by coming here, they'll lose every opportunity to make the best out of their lives. So um, a lot of these things are faces I personally have been through and I felt that something needed to change and I uh, put my best foot forward to help that change happen. <laughs> That's an interesting question. Uh, the, I always say to people, the power of the NDC and the power of the MPP doesn't lie with the MPP or the NDC as parties. It lies in the fact that people have made a decision that they want to support NDC and they want to support MPP. If you take those people away, which are the ordinary Ghanaians, if you take those people away, the NDC does not exist and the MPP does not exist. I feel my job is to sell a different proposition to the Ghanaian people to say, look, you haven't gotten anything from the NDC and the MPP the last 27 plus years. And if you haven't gotten anything from them this last 27 years, you're not likely to get anything from them for another 27 years. So it is, it is not rocket science that we need to move away from the NDC and MPP duopoly. What I want to do is to offer Ghanaians a better way of getting things done, a better way that is not clouded by the corruption, the, the, the whole political you know, uh, gimmicks thing, um, and, and offer something more practical to Ghanaians and say, look, the future is bright. We can get to a place that we can all enjoy and be proud of this country as, as we've always wanted it to be. So um, I know Ghanaians are smart people. I know they will make a decision um, come 2020 that, you know what, we have not gotten anything from the NDC or the NPP. And it's about time to change. Um, and it all, all, that's all it takes to actually change and say, you know, we've had enough of this too. We want to have something different. Uh, and at this stage, I say to people, look, you don't have anything to lose. You really do not have anything to lose because you've already been beaten down for the last 27 years. Why do you want to go through the same thing? Um, so that's my view. It would take the Ghanaian people, it would take the ordinary people, yourself and myself, who would go out there and say, you know what, let's try this differently now uh, and let's see what we get out of it because it looks positive. And I, I want to assure Ghanaians that, look, I am in this as much as the ordinary Ghanaian. I, I'm quite young. I'm not a pensioner looking to stash away money and go on retirement. If this goes horribly wrong, my own life is affected. If, if it goes well, I have a future to look forward to. So um, I am in this skin deep as much as every Ghanaian is. 
So I feel their frustrations. I feel everything they feel, and, and this is what we need to do. Campaigns everywhere take a lot of money. Um, but I think what we also need to realize is that, look, there's, there's been a, a particular way we've done politics for so long, which is, you know, to use money to do everything. It has meant that nobody in any of the parties have ever tried to do things more efficiently with less focus on money. That's something we're trying to do. We know we cannot match the MPP and the NDC in terms of money or their political machinery. So, you know, we have decided to be very creative and very efficient in the way we use um, the little finances we have. Having said that, I am happy to say that, look, our finances have all come from and will continue to come from the ordinary Ghanaian people who want to see a change happen. Um, we're not, I don't intend or neither does my team intend or the entirety of our, of our group, we do not intend to take you know, any money from two or three people who would intend hijack you know, our governance process uh, should we go the full mile. So um, this is the ordinary people's agenda. Uh, the ordinary people will fund it. Um, and it's the only way I can, you can hold somebody responsible because you were all part of that process. Uh, rather than two or three people who, you know, you get into power and they want to hijack everything uh, that, that you stand for, uh, we, we wouldn't go down that road. I could spend the next couple of hours talking about that, but in summary, there are eight key areas we want to focus on. We split that into two. Um, four areas are going to be the leading charge, which are education, agriculture, uh, the economy and institutional changes, uh, and health. Um, and each of those have a reason why we're putting them first. I agree because it is our competitive advantage. Um, and we feel we can do a lot more if we if we do agree in a more integrated and, and a better way. Um, health, because you know we're losing too much of our productive uh, human capital. You know, um, at, at the middle age when they're supposed to be at their peak. So we need to change that. Uh, we want to change the economy in terms of health, such that you know the economy shifts from funerals being a big income and rather than you know health of people so that's health um, of course education because we believe education is our weapon of mass elevation um, it's the one way we can elevate a majority of people and we're talking about numbers here we're talking about the quality of education education in such a way that people do not end up simply thinking if they don't get an employment after work their life comes to an end we want to do education in such a way that people come out of school solving problems and creating opportunities for themselves so that's education and then of course institutional strengthening and the economy um look our public sector is that one sector that the indecisions or decisions of the public sector can affect the population in a massive way um, and it, it means that we need to have the best quality in our public sector and that's what we intend to do so those are the four big areas that are leading the charge and then of course in the background um, uh, not that they are lesser but those are other areas that we want to focus on so we're talking about tourism we're talking about and tourism is a big it's a big economy just sitting there waiting to be exploited and that's something we want to do we've got our culture we've got our our history we've got our food we've got our weather we've got everything working in our favor where where we need to um, uh, uh, go in tourism but we're not using it enough and that's something we need to um, uh, focus on so we've got tourism we've got the energy sector we've got um, uh, an agenda to make ghana a hub for west africa we want to get ghana to a position where you cannot do business in west africa without going through ghana that's crucial for us um, so those these are the key areas that we want to uh, uh, focus on and then of course there are other overarching things that we want to deal with like corruption like uh, health and uh, and sanitation and and more you know uh, environment as well we've got noise pollution that we need to deal with in this country uh, and other things so um, in general um, I know it's a short time but that's in large part what what we're looking to do I may not have said unemployment as a, as a term, but we've got an employment factor in our plan on agriculture. We've got an employment factor in our plan on education. Um, so if you take agriculture, for example, um, 
we've got unemployment factored in there because we, we want to structure a Greek in a way that um, has four quadrants and each of those four quadrants is targeted at getting youth to do um, a Greek in, in a different way than it's currently done now. You know, now we still have the whole peasant farming method of doing agriculture. We want to move away from that, but as a government, we also want to push a lot of support into that sector. So we've got the arm of a grid where we're going to be focusing on just growing so these are people who will, will get access to land will get access to support will get access to technical support and capital to just go out there and grow and then we have the food processing which is we want to get a, a number of youth into that sector where we can start processing our, 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 our greek products and, and start uh, exporting or even treating uh, locally uh, and then there is the um, the area of a uh, Greek where we want to focus on, which is agro tech, which is technology. Um, because look, there are already people doing some good work here in technology, but they've not gotten support. Uh, and we want to give them that support and and open that area up for the youth because we feel that it would also make a Greek more efficient. Um, and then the last bit of that you know quadrant is the. Um, agro uh, chemicals uh, we want to expand on agro chemicals rather than importing all of that so those four areas of a greek uh, areas we know would attract a lot of you because we will make it attractive to the youth then of course we talk about education which is a huge um, uh, key in our employment agenda um, and largely because we want to structure education and when i talk about education we're not talking about just education in terms of going to school there are people who are out of the schooling system who may never go back into the schooling system but who need to be invested in to get the skills necessary for them to start creating their own opportunities so we're talking education in a more holistic manner here um, uh, but also for those going into school we want to make education a lot more competency based competency based in the sense that look i want somebody to come out of uh, studying i met a gentleman the other day he's studying accounting i asked him um, have you been studying how to use x software have you studied how to use excel have you studied how to use uh, python have you he's done none of those meanwhile those are the very tools he's going to need from day one when he gets to start working in an accounting environment so we want to make education a lot more competency based and let people come out knowing that they are capable rather than oh we now need to see how we fare in the in the employment sector and if they don't get an employment then they feel their life is over uh, we want to change all of that it's critical we change all of that so that we don't focus on oh government has to employ people and if they don't employ people then everything is, is crashing down that needs to change i'll tell you vote um, and come vote for me um, look the thing is this Yes, I know you are not happy with what is currently being offered, and rightly so. But I'd like you to also know that not voting in itself is a decision you have made to give your power to the very people you're trying to change. So um, if you say you're not going to vote and two other people or three other people go out and vote for the people you don't want to vote for they've actually made a decision for yourself uh, and for for everybody who concerns you so i'll say look go out there and vote vote differently i know you feel you don't have to vote because you feel there's only going to be the same two people or the same usual parties on the ballot box but look we want to do this differently um i pray to god that we get on that ballot uh, box and when we do you need to go out there and make your voices heard you need to go out there and vote for the change you want you need to go out there and say to whoever are the two you don't want now and say you know what here is my vote this is proof that i want something different so uh, you do need to go out there and vote you not voting is not a choice uh, so please don't make it a choice okay we need to do this we, we need every vote that should count out there to make this happen we will still continue this process. I'm not here to run once uh, and if it doesn't happen to back off. Uh, we're putting everything in with this to make sure it happens. But um, in the unlikely event that it doesn't happen, you know, we're not going to stop. I'm going to continue running this process and, and just wait for another another uh, four years. Um, but, you know, I do a lot of work with, uh, with youth here. I will uh, hopefully be going back to expand that or, or do something that, that moves this country forward. 
my final words is quite simple we've run this um, show for 27 years you and I know there's nothing that has come out of it we will be doing an injustice to ourselves and the generations yet unborn if we go down the same route come 2020 so here's to everybody let's go out there let's convince somebody and in 2020 let's change this and give Ghana a better chance.